Afterburner was developed by Rutubo Games and released for the Sega 32X in 1995. Think of this as a retro retro game, developed before re-releasing old 80s games was a thing. Afterburner had been released on dozens of home consoles and computers before 1995, but this version finally did the arcade classic justice. The first thing you notice when you fire up Afterburner are the graphics. While the world was turning towards polygons, Rutubo proved how gorgeous sprites can still be. Afterburner is an insanely fast game, and the ground beneath you whizzes by. The Sega 32X has no problem scaling nearly every sprite on the screen. All of this graphical wizardry happens without a hint of slowdown, and the frame rate stays locked in at 30 frames per second. The only downside to the graphics is that when objects get really close, they do get a bit pixelated, but this is faithful to the arcade original. As far as I can tell, the goal in Afterburner is simply to survive the chaos. You have unlimited Vulcan cannon ammo, as well as a limited supply of missiles. When the announcer yells fire, you must fire your missiles, which will take down a target that you've locked onto. With the insane speed and general chaos around you, it can be hard to tell what's going on. The smooth frame rate and sprite scaling do go a long way, but there are still times when you will die without really knowing why. Did I get hit from behind, run into an enemy, or get hit by some missile that was hiding between the dozen other jets I was chasing? Each of the 23 levels in Afterburner are fairly unique, featuring their own color of sky and unique terrain. The terrain is actually quite good, and you can see rivers and other bodies of water, and even roads. They do a great job of giving a sense of depth. Moving on, the sound is top notch, with good weapon sounds and convincing explosions. The soundtrack is unique in that the 32X is producing most of the music, rather than the Genesis, and is comparable to the original coin-up version. Each stage gets its own track and consists mostly of synthesized rock music that fits the 80s theme perfectly and does a good job of setting the mood for the intense pace of the game. That intense pace means you are going to die a lot. Thankfully, there is a continue system. If you reach level 5, 9, 13, or 19 and run out of lives, you start back at the last checkpoint level you've reached, rather than the beginning of the game. That means with enough persistence, you will beat this. Additional options have also been added, including five difficulty options and the ability to have up to six lives per credit. These things go a long way in making Afterburner a more accessible game. The controls are responsive and far superior to most home conversions. The B button fires your Vulcan cannon, and the C button fires your missiles. After locking onto an enemy, you can fire a missile to take them out. The A button is used for barrel rolls. The barrel rolls feel sloppy in this version of the game, however, as sometimes I could do them without ever pressing A, and other times the A button was completely useless. Afterburner for the Sega 32X adds features that were included with Afterburner 2 in the arcades. Most importantly is the throttle. You have three different speeds which you can travel at, low, medium, and high, which are mapped to the X, Y, and Z buttons on the six-button controller. There are a couple of levels which have you flying through a canyon with walls on each side. These stages require you to put it in low and carefully navigate the terrain. There are also a few instances where you have a heat-seeking missile or jet on your tail, requiring you to kick it into high to outrun them. Sega's 32X add-on finally gives Afterburner the home port it deserves and really showcases how much more powerful the 32X is compared to other hardware of the time. The title does a great job showing off the power of the 32X, and it's a shame the system was discontinued before other superscalar games like Hang On and Outrun could get the same treatment. Overall, Afterburner is a solid title. The gameplay is still flawed and oftentimes more chaotic than it really needs to be, but the inclusion of a reasonable continue system helped mask some of its downfalls. 
Graphically, the game is a real treat. The excellent sound effects and 80s rock round out the package. There aren't a whole lot of good 32x titles, and this one definitely stands out. Recommended.